Hi, assalamu alaikum and a very good morning. So today we're going to do some tutorial discussion for chapter 1 for the subtopic of 1.2 collision theory focusing on question 10. We're also going to do the subtopic of 1.3 factors affecting regression rate focusing on question 13 and 14. So without any further ado, let us start. So for question 10, we have to explain the effect of temperature on reaction rate based on the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curve. So the graph that you will be needed to draw here is the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curve as per explained in the uh, last video of 1.3. So here we have at lower temperature we have T1 and at a higher temperature we have T2. So um, the number of molecules of T1 and the number of molecules in T2 is basically the same. But as what you can see here, um, the temperature, the graph at T2 is more skewed to the right ataupun lebih banyak dianjakkan ke arah kanan and this causes that the number of molecule to be achieving uh, can the more number of particle will have a energy equal or higher than the activation energy and hence can start up a chemical reaction okay uh, to understand this more let push, let's put that into words so the diagram shows a Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curve for T1 and T2 and the area under the curve basically represents the total number of molecules in the reaction. So basically the total number of particles for T1 and T2 is the same. And in the shaded area here basically represent the number of molecules possessing kinetic energy here equal or greater than the activation energy. So, we can see that here, the T2 graph, which has a higher energy, has a greater number of molecules moving at high speed with higher energy. Because, as well you can see here, the, the percentage of the graph for T2 is much, much bigger compared to T1, where only a small percentage of it have an energy greater than EA. Okay, and therefore you can say that more molecule can achieve the minimum energy, which is the activation energy, for the reaction to occur in the T2 graph at a higher temperature. Thus, rate of reaction increases with a higher temperature. Alright, so this is the way that we need to explain for a Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curve. Moving on to the next question, which is question 13, what is meant by activation energy? So talking about activation energy, you might be imagining to be something like this. So it is an a minimum energy required in order for the reactant to initiate a chemical reaction. So all the colliding particle must have enough energy to overcome the barrier and hence uh, to form an activated complex before going into product. And the state, the, the state that the activated complex is formed is known as the transition state. Okay, but we just need to answer the question, which is what is meant by activation energy? So we can simply say that activation energy is the minimum amount of energy required to initiate a chemical reaction. Untuk memulakan sesuatu tidak malas. Alright, and for B, the rate constant of a reaction at 463 Kelvin is 2.52 times 10 to the power of negative 5 per second and at 503 Kelvin is 6.3 times 10 to the power of negative 4 per second we have to determine the activation energy for the reaction all right so we have two uh, information here so the first strip of information is k1 at this temperature and k2 at the second temperature so for this state we have to find the activation energy so for here, we have to use the Arrhenius equation that has been derived and this happens at, four, at two different temperatures. What you really need to be careful is of ln K1 over K2 is equal to Ea over R times 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. So K1 and T1 is at the top, but it's gonna, T1 here is going to be at the high end. Okay, don't um, mix it up. Okay, by knowing the information, you can plug the value here. T1, you can plug in here. K2, you can plug in here. 
T2 you can plug in here and then you can find the activation energy EA here. For R, uh, it refers to a case constant where R is equal to 8.314 Joule per Kelvin per mole. Alright. Okay, so once you substitute that in and calculate each section if you are worried about the, uh, the technical errors that might arise so you do it slowly one by one and then once you do, you do the maths you will get EA is equal to 155.646 kilojoule per mole all right and for now the last question 14 we were given a rate constant k for the decomposition of hydrogen iodide at different temperature are given in the table below so we have a uh, different rate constant at different temperature so, for example, temperature of 500 Kelvin going to have 3.75 times 10 to the power of negative 9 per mole per second. And for the first question, we have to write the Arrhenius equation. So, the Arrhenius equation is quite direct, where k is equal to Ae to the power of negative Ea over Rt. And for question B, we have to determine the activation energy for the decomposition of hydrogen iodide graphically from the above data. So, uh, in order for you to do that, you need to uh, use the Arrhenius equation that has been derived further. So, um, once you do the derivation, as in the uh, lecture video of 1.3, uh, you will get this formula where you will get ln k is equal to negative Ea over R multiplied by 1 over t plus ln e. However, the derivation is not required, but if you are interested to learn more about the derivation, you can go to the uh, lecture videos. If not, you can use the equation straight away. So, from the equation, you know, you know that we will get a straight line graph, where y is equal to mx plus c. Okay, And we can find the activation energy by knowing the gradient of the graph. So, we have to construct a graph of ln k at y axis and 1 over t at x axis. So the first thing that we need to do is to construct a new table. So ln k with this value and 1 over t with this value. So ln, ln k of 3.75 times 10 to the power of negative 9 will get neg negative 19.4. 1 over 500 will get 2 times 10 to the power of negative 3. So you will do that for every each of the data and you will put that in the new table. Okay, once you do that, you can now construct ln k versus 1 over t. This one is the y-axis and this one will be the x-axis. Alright, so please do that in the graph table, in the graph paper. And I'll do that in Excel here to show how... Uh, the pattern of the graph or the shape of the curve that you might be expecting to get. So here um, I draw I draw a graph of ln k as y exists and 1 over t as the x exists. And here are the straight line graph that I have obtained. And be careful here that I took out the times 10 to the power of negative 3 as the outside so that here I can get a uh, a nice value here instead of 0, 0.00 something. So I think if you take it out, don't forget to include it back during the calculation. Okay, now we have constructed and uh, get a straight line graph. Now we need to get to know the gradient because we need to find the activation energy. So from the graph of ln k versus 1 over t, we need to find the slope. Okay, in order to find the slope, you can draw a triangle and take Two coordinate. So let's say I take this coordinate, which is 1.25 times 10 to the power of negative 3. So don't forget this one to include it back. And 2.56 as the y exists. And then I'll take another uh, coordinate, which is 2 times 10 to the power of negative 3. And the y value is negative 19.4. All right, as in the per table here. So I can now find the change in delta y and delta x. So delta y is equal to negative 19.4 minus minus 2.56, which is written here, and 2 times 10 to the power of negative 3 minus 1.25 times 10 to the power of negative 3. 
So uh, the slope that I'll be getting is something like this. And lastly, I will get negative 2.24 times 10 to the power of 4 Kelvin. All right. And because here it has no units and here is per Kelvin. Okay. So per Kelvin, when you, in, you brought it uh, upwards, you're going to be Kelvin here. All right. And then by knowing the slope, you know that your slope M is equal to negative EA over R. Okay, and from here, you can uh, equate the equation to be equal to negative 224 times 10 to the power of 4 Kelvin. And now, you can bring the R value to the right hand side, where your R value is 8.314 times Joule per mole per Kelvin. And the negative sign here will be cancelled out. Okay, and remember, the R value that we are using is 8.314, not 0 0.08206. Okay, not this one. This is because usually our activation energy is denoted in the units of Joule. If this one, you're going to get liter ATM per mole per Kelvin, which is not helpful for you to find the activation energy. So don't use this one. Instead, using the 8.314. So once you do the math, you will get EA is equal to 186223233 joule per mole or if you want to convert that into kilojoule per mole you divide by 1000 so you will get EA is equal to 186.2 kilojoule per mole all right i think that's all for uh, for this tutorial video see you again some other time thank you and goodbye